This is the Sunday School lesson for September 20th, 2020. We'll be looking at Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. The fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Oh, my papa, to me he was so wonderful. Oh, my papa, to me he was so good. Now, if you remember that song, you're older than I am. And if you remember this guy, you're pretty old too. His name is Eddie Fisher. Uh, I invite you to Google him. He had an interesting life. But he had a number one hit back in 53 and 54, that song. Him is for the million things he gave me. Another very old song. Originally, the lyrics were the many things she gave me, but it became popular to say million, and that's how it usually appears and usually how it's sung now. Let's talk for a moment about memories. Now, hopefully your memories of your childhood, your father and mother, were good. I know that's not always the case. Sometimes it's mixed. We have good and bad. And even if you were not fortunate to have a strong father figure or a good mother, someone in your life acted as a father figure and a mother figure, and you're thankful to those people for what they did to help raise you. Not all the memories of my father are pleasant, but I choose to focus on the positive. This is me and my dad, H.F. Wynn, in the 1950s in the Okefenokee Swamp. And my mama, Judy, gave me a lot of good memories. This was one of our last outings before dementia began to set in. It's a picture of us in the holiday season up in Tennessee some years back. And this is Lamar McDonald, commonly known as Mac. He was a former Marine and longtime policeman, police chief. We got off to kind of a rough start, but again, I choose to remember the positive. So before we go any further, let me ask you again, reflect back on your childhood. Think of good memories that you associate with your parents. Now, oh, wait a moment. So the commandment is to honor your father and mother. Now, in the original languages, honor means that you treat someone or something as if it has great value, a treasure. And this honor begins in childhood with obedience. Paul says in Ephesians, Children, obey your parents, for this is right. And you honor your parents by listening to them. Don't disregard or ignore. To learn and follow what they tell you. To carry out their instructions. And then perhaps they will teach you skills that can do you good your whole life. And finally, respecting, learning and practicing courtesy in the home, and that will help you to practice it elsewhere. You also show great honor to your parents by not bringing them dishonor, doing nothing to bring shame to your family, embarrassment, scandal. Respect in the home yields order and peace, not just in the home, but in the community. And in the nation. A lack of respect in the home later turns into a lack of respect in society. It brings disorder and violence. It produces the perilous times that Paul wrote about in Timothy. Now respect for your parents and other elders continues on into your adulthood. When you're grown, you still treat them respectfully. Though the relationship has changed, you continue to give them honor. Now, Jesus quoted the uh, book of Genesis. He said one day we would leave our parents. A man would leave his father and mother. We form a home of our own. We become the mom and dad, the husband and the wife. But even so, we continue to maintain a relationship with our parents. Hopefully it'll be a a relationship that is beneficial and brings a lot of joy to everybody. Eventually, honor translates into compassion. You may even find the roles reversed as your parents get older. For those of you that still have your parents at whatever age they might be, 
Respect for elders continues well into adulthood and for as long as you can. Let them know they're still loved, still valuable, still honored. As Paul says, this commandment comes with a promise. After we're told to honor our father and mother, we're told so that we may have our days long upon the land that he gives us. And the way that Paul quotes it in his letter is that you may live long on the earth. This commandment has a promise of someone living long, long in the land, long on the earth. Now, of course, in those days, you did stay a lot healthier and live a lot longer if you did respect your parents for a number of reasons. But God also honors his promise even to this generation that if people will show respect, that he will bless their life, he will bless their family, he will bless their nation. If respect is practiced in the home. Because you see, when God and Moses gave this commandment, they weren't just talking about you living a long time. They were talking about your nation lasting a long time. A nation that does not have respect in the home and honoring parents and the family institution. Well, that nation is doomed Israel had a lot of trouble because they got away from the laws of God. Our own nation is having a lot of trouble because we have gotten so far from the laws of God. Life is short. Sooner or later, we all run out of time. And so as I begin my closing points today, I want to remind you to spend whatever time you can with your family, especially parents and for them, especially as they get older, to spend quality time, to make it a point, to let nothing else take priority over God and family. Communicate with them. If you're no longer living at home, at least stay in touch. Some people speak frequently, some people very seldom, but it's important as you spend that time in conversation or visiting. And as you get older and your elders continue to be older than you, address them respectfully and whatever title you might call them or when you talk about anything, especially if you have to work together. Paul says in his writings not to rebuke an elder, but to treat him like you would your father, to remember their position and what they've been through and their experience. If it should become necessary to disagree or point out a better way to do things, do it with the most grace and courtesy possible. If your aging parents should require help, then do whatever you can to help them or see if they get the help they need. Perhaps you have other relatives or your friends have older relatives. Perhaps the Lord might laid upon your heart to help somebody. There are a lot of different ways that people need help as they get older. So you ask the Lord to open your eyes to how you might minister to them. If your parents are no longer here on this earth, then honor their memory and tell others about their lives. Be an example for people younger than you to follow. You may need to be a parental figure or mentor to somebody who needs your guidance. Be a model of honor, of truth, and integrity. And if you're not sure about the exact meaning of integrity, it means you have strong morals. You've got it together. You are a righteous person. Lord, we thank you for good parents. Pray that you would help us to be good parents and to be good to our older parents. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now for all you Tom fans, we're giving Tom the cat and all the dogs a couple of weeks off. I want to focus your attention on something very serious. Next week's lesson will be longer and a very serious, perhaps even controversial, 
type lesson about the importance of not committing murder and valuing all human life. Lord willing, we will see you soon.